Hi, and welcome back to Thai TV. My name is Stefan Jensen, and today I'm going to show you one of my all-time favorite flies for sea trout and uh, perch fishing. Uh, I love shrimps, and this shrimp is probably this shrimp pattern is probably that fly I've caught the most fish on throughout my whole fishing uh, life. It's a very simple pattern, tied of more or less one material. Um, it will work winter time, summer time, fall, spring, always. And as I said, for many different species, but I mainly use it for um, sea trout and perch. So um, let's get started. My favorite hook for this is a partridge uh, attitude streamer. It got a wide gap and not extremely long shank, but very good for for building up the fly as well. I love the white gap hooks because they hook the fish perfectly. Put it there. Thread on the hook. Just go all the way down just to secure it. Then I normally put a piece of weight to it. Here I use some lead wire. You can use some round or some flat. I normally use some flat and put it on the underneath. Not too much, but just to make it balanced. And depending on how much material you're putting on the fly, you want more or less weight. You want it to be suspending. I want it to be suspending and low sink, slow sinking. Um, I don't want it to fall towards the bottom as a rock, but I want it to more or less stand still and go slowly downwards and lift it up again. So I want it to be more or less suspending. Um, the weight that I'm adding on to my hook is more or less the length of the shank. Like that. And then I just pinch off the last part of it. Like that. So, the main ingredients in this fly is uh, a dubbing, a dub called baitfish dubbing. Um, that's maybe a wrong name, but it actually says here for shrimp patterns as well, so you can, you can use it, no worries. To start out, just take a little bunch of it. This is a very, very long fiber dubbing, and that will mean that it, it's... It's very durable when it's when it's on the hook because it's mixed into the thread and into itself. So put that on, squeeze it between my fingers, just like that. And you don't need a lot here. You just need a little little dot. Like that. I can just put the rest of it on, doesn't matter. You can use that all the excess material to, to build up uh, the, the, the fly. Go back, so we've got a couple of millimeters here. And then it's time for the mouth parts. I prefer to have the mouth parts in a totally different color. Here I'm using a neon flash. Uh, fluor neon flashable. You can use it as a um, as a mark on the fly as well. But this one is actually it reacts to the um, the U UV light, and there's a big discussion going on with the UV lights today whether it's more effective or not. Um, many very good sea trout anglers from uh, mainly Denmark claims that makes a big 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 difference with the UV of fluorescent um, compared to a fly that hasn't got it. Well it doesn't doesn't harm to, to have it. I took um, I took three strands which are doubled. I'm gonna double them once more and just cut it off here. too long these ones I'll just place them again like that so these one doesn't have to go too far out 
but you can always cut them afterwards so just tie them in like one centimeter behind the dot that point where you place the little and I go all the way up to about uh, seven millimeters from the hook bent uh, sorry the, the hook eye and I pull it down backwards again and tie it down again so I'm, I place it double like that try to collect it try to get it on top like that and pull firmly the good spread on that again a little bit more dubbing here also try to to double it like that and I just take my scissor and cut it all of that should be double or not like that pull out the loose hanging stuff there same again a little bit longer than you want your mouth mouth parts to to be like that tie it in on top like that and then the rest of it hanging here you just tie it in and cut it off a bit I don't want it to go far up, too far out because I can use this uh, uh, this to tape up my fly to make the body of, of the shrimp so I don't want it to go all the way up to to the front of the hook I cut it off so I'll get the, the most material in the back because I want to build this build up this part and make it slim towards the end of it of the hook of the end of front uh, like that and I go back like that. try to make sure it's on top not on the sides there you go then it's time for shrimp eyes today I'm gonna use Venyoch fly eyes, small size in orange. These ones will also react to the light, to the UV light, um, and they are going to be situated in, in the same spot. So you got double effect of it. If you want to use black ones, you can use black ones. It's entirely up to you. But yeah, I think, well, it doesn't look like a normal shrimp, but it, it works. These ones are straight now. I'm just going to give them a slight bend just between my fingers. Like that. I get a little little bend to it. It's much easier to tie them in. Place the first one. Couple of firm. Second one. Give it a bend as well. Like that, a little bit more, so. Good firm pull. And just take a look from this side, whether it's situated where you want it to sit, where you want it to be, so, before you tie it firmly. Pull, pull them a little bit. We're going to secure these with some super glue as well, so they're going to be stuck. So again, I'm going to cut them off, but I'm not going to cut them off in all the way out. I'm going to cut them off on the middle of the hook, like that. Tie it in. If you use this technique with cutting it. Cutting all in, in different lengths is so much easier to taper the fly and you'll use a lot less material. And now it's time for some super glue. Add it on, just 
all the way around, all the way up. This would make a very strong fly and it was al also help help your fly work better with corrosion. The, the water won't get in as easy. So and here's a little trick which I normally use. Sometimes it can be difficult to get the the, the right um, head shape on, on the strip flies with all this soft material. So I normally place a little dot of glue on the actually on the actually dubbing I place there and just pull it up like that. That will make it stand a lot better. So this part here is actually getting a bit hard. And you'll get you'll it will be easier for you to build up the head shape. A piece of nylon about 1.20 as we're going to use for, as a rib. The, the glue is still wet so you don't need to glue it again. This one is going to be stuck here forever. Like that and all the way back. Look at your eyes again. They're still there. Perfect and it's standing as I want it. I want a little bit more on top there. How much material are you going to use this? You're going to learn that when you've tied a couple of flies. Double it. And don't be afraid to put too much material on the fly either because you can always pull it off if you don't need it. Just a half a centimeter back. I'm going to cut this up and use that as well. trim it later on. Time for the body. If you want to make shrimp flies in, in different colors, I'm using this uh, tan color, um, do it. You can use golden honey, light tan, this dubbing comes in very many different, different colors, so try, try whatever you want. But this is my favorite, this and the light, the light tan one. Um, remember when you I'll show later when you're putting super glue on the dubbing it's gonna change color to a darker to a darker variant. Again, putting dubbing on the thread. Now it's time for, for building up the body. All the way back. And you go forward. Start light, don't make it too thick to begin with, because we wanna go forward, we wanna go back, and we wanna go forward again. We wanna build up uh, the right shape of the shrimp fly. And don't be afraid to make it a bit thick because we're going to brush it up and a lot of it is actually going to disappear again. Like that. Pull it every once in a while to make it firm. Forward, pull it, backwards again. Actually going all the way up. Like that. Like that. And a little bit more. Now we just need the, the rest of it. And the rest of it doesn't have to be that thick. Like that. Tie it down. That's right. Just gonna go 
through it with my throbbing, throbbing brush. Just a quick to lighten up the dubbing a bit. It's gonna be a lot harder on this fly later on, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit. Now I'm gonna take the color golden honey to make the, the shield on the fly, the back of the fly. Take quite a good bunch, and again, don't be afraid to take too little, you can just add more to it. Just pull it out so I got all the fibers going in the same direction. Just place it on top and tie it down. Pull it down to see if if you think that's enough. I want a little bit more, not not a lot, um, just a little bit. It looks a lot, but when we tie it down, it's going to be a lot less. I can pull off the very long strands like that. Place it on top. If you want, you can keep some of it, some of it, off some of the dubbing materials here for, like the back of the shrimp, the the tail of it, or you can cut it all off. I cut it like a little bit too long just to have the back parts, of the tail of the shrimp like that. Then it's time time for the ribbing. Press it down, hold it firmly, and go. With tight, you tie it down very, very tight. Just go with a couple of millimeters, three maybe, all the way up. To the hook eye. Make sure it's on top. Like that. Tie it in. And lose it. So, super glue. Gonna put this straight on my thread. And just tie it down. Very firm. hang for a while. Then we can start trimming it. This is too long. So I just, I'm just pulling it. Pull the excess, and let the excess material off. Um, don't be afraid to, to take too much. It's still too long, I guess. I want some fibers, some of the dubbing to be, to be long, but I don't want all of it to be that long. There you go. Like that. And these ones are a bit too long as well, so I'm just cutting these ones in different lengths. Don't think it matters that much, but now they're a little bit short anyway. Move your tying thread and then super glue the whole back of it again to, to secure it. Not too much, but just go all the way back. And then again, you could lift up. So you make sure it doesn't fall down. So, that also makes this, the fly very durable, very strong. Drop the dubbing brush and then just hammer it. 
back and forward, back and forward. And you need to work it for a while before you get the fibers out. We used rib, we went with uh, thin rounds of, of dubbing to just work it. You got a lot of dubbing underneath there. So, almost there. Take your dubbing needle before you touch it and just press it on top to make sure that the glue is actually dry and, and gone out. It's not set totally yet. It takes a little while. If you want, you can use uh, UV glue or you can use epoxy as well for, for, the, for the shield, but this is enough. And then I'm, all, then I'm satisfied. This fly doesn't look much, it probably doesn't even look very much like a, a shrimp, um, but it works. And it's easy to tie and it lasts for a long time, a very long time, it's easy to cast. And yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic fishing fly. So the last thing I want to show you is how it looks when we put the, light, uh, the, the UV light on it. Um, we're going to turn the lights off so you can see the, the proper effect of of uh, the throws and uh, the neon colors, how they re react to it. And that's um, what many claims that the sea trout actually sees. So let's turn the light off. We turned off some of the light and this is how we see it. Um, and when we put the UV light on it, it starts to glow. And that's the effect that many, many sea trout anglers claims that's very effective. Um, I think I've had better results with the UV lights as well, but if I'm just like in my mind or it's actually working, I don't know yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop using it. I'm going to keep on having this. I don't want too much, but this is perfect. So, which gives it a very good effect. So try this fly, tie it in different variations, different sizes from very small to maybe maybe even bigger, but it's quite big. Um, color it with different types of marker pens, add some rubber legs, do whatever. But this is a very good base and a very good fishing fly as a base as well. So get out there and tight lines.